So we left off with our work equation here. And you can compute work as a projection, which is basically how I looked at it in this diagram here. The other way to compute is a dot product, which gets you the uh, how much in the direction of another vector that your vector is uh, pointing. So we'll just compute it with a dot product, and then it'll make our computation easy. So we'll push a box up a 30 degree ramp. And the ramp is 10 meters long. With a constant force. Parallel to the ground. And the force is 40 newtons. And find the work. So we already saw the work equation above. So we'll write that down, W equals F dot D. So we know some information about the force and we know some information about the displacement. So let's draw a diagram so we can figure out exactly what the vectors are for F and D. So this will be the ground and our 30 degree ramp. Doesn't matter which direction you make your ramp. I'll just go up to the right, 30 degrees. So we have a box being pushed. So there's our box, and it's going to have a displacement. We'll go green for the displacement. So that'll be the displacement vector, red for the force vector, obviously. So that will, you can draw this wherever you want. I'll just draw it right here to the right. I could also move the force vector down below, right at the origin. So you can choose where you want your force vector to go. Maybe I'll make the force vector a little longer so it's not look like it doesn't look like it's shorter than the angle. So we're gonna be taking the dot product of these vectors, but we need to compute what they are. Let's start with the force vector. Do I need to use three dimensions on this problem? No. Nope, I don't need to go out of the board at all. So I can just do this all in two dimensions. What is the y coordinate of the force vector? Zero. So y coordinate will be zero. What about the x coordinate? 40 newtons. So that's 40 to the right, so 40 newtons. I believe that Newtons is already a meters, has meters as a unit. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, kilogram meters per second squared. So, so kilograms times right. meters right. divided by second squared, something like that. Mm -hmm. All right, so you can write down your units and uh, comp compute that if you'd like to. So we got to figure out our displacement vector. The only thing we know is it's 30 degrees and the magnitude. So one way to write it is magnitude times cos 30 degrees comma sine 30 degrees. So 10 meters long. And cos 30 is square root 3 over 2, sine 30, 1 half. Oh. And distribute the 10 
That'll be 5 square root 3, comma, 5. So we'll compute the work now. So it's 40, 0, dot, 5 square root 3, 5. So it's 40 times 5 square root 3 plus 0. So that is 200 square root 3. Now we did have this work formula in pre-calculus class, but this entire section was basically a review of pre -cal Well, almost this entire chapter is a review of pre-calculus right here. So that is the end of dot product. Uh, let's, well, let's care about work. No, let's not worry about units. We're not in a real science class. That's good enough. So we're going to go to cross product next. Well, I think units are very important if you're engineering or doing anything in real life. We're doing nothing in real life, so we don't need them. They're just going to get in our way. All right, cross product is not a product that's having a bad day. It is, we use this product notation, is going to look just like x. So we're going to start with the right hand rule. So that's a good spot to begin. So if you have a right hand, you can do the right hand rule. So vector 1 is going to be your first index finger. Vector 2 is your middle finger. So in this case, u is your pointer, v is your middle. You don't need your last two fingers, so you could be a ninja turtle, still do this, no problem. Uh, I'm going to draw a right hand on the board here. And if you are bad at drawing, then you can just copy me that the hand I draw, so that's supposed to be a thumb, and that'll be the first finger, second finger, and now I'm going to try to draw the folded over fingers, draw them like ovals, and that's mostly your hand right there. So we got U, V, and then the thumb is the cross product. Now I'm going to draw a stylized version right next to it. And it has a property that these are perpendicular right here. The cross product is perpendicular to your other two vectors. So if we look at the hand, I probably should have drawn my back to my second finger, a little bit separated from my first finger. I don't really want them to be parallel. Uh, we'll look at what happens when they are parallel. But you want them to be separated a little bit, sort of like you're doing a walking motion, or you're doing a number one and then flicking somebody off, kind of like that. But you don't want to flick people off because that would not be the right-handed rule. So. Index finger straight ahead, middle finger points to your left, and then your thumb points straight up. All right, <clears throat> so this is the right hand rule. So if your U and V vectors are parallel to the ground, then your thumb should be pointing straight up. Unless you switch your two vectors. So when you switch U and V, don't flick somebody off, but make your index finger point to your middle finger direction and your middle finger point to your index finger direction. You're gonna to have to use a lot of like elbow and shoulder movement to make that happen. So it should turn your hand kind of upside down. It's a little more than upside down, but your thumb will point underneath. So think about where your index middle finger are pointing and then rotate your hand around so your fingers point the direction the other one pointed. So my index finger is going left, middle finger is going straight forward, thumb's going straight down. Isn't there also an IJK circle or whatever? There, I'm sure there's other ways to conceptualize it. We're just going to stick with the hand. 
All right, so what we just observed right there, if you swap U and V, your thumb, your cross product turns around, goes backwards. So that is negative thumb or negative vector because it's turning opposite direction. So that's one property we get right from the right hand rule. So U cross V is equal to negative V cross U. So that's what we call, it's not commutativity, it's negative commutativity, so we call it anti-commutativity. I wonder if that's a Scrabble word. If somebody busts out commutativity and then you put anti in front, that would be... I think you don't have enough Scrabble letters to spell commutativity. If someone... Oh, I don't... Has. There's no word like mutivity. Yeah, I don't see like a sub word anywhere in here to, yeah, that's just my Scrabble dream. It's probably, it's not even worth that much. All the letters are, it doesn't matter. Yeah, the V is the best there. Triple word score is always good. Quiz is one of the, my favorite words. All right, so let's go with the definition. There's a few different definitions. We'll start with the one that has a sign in it. So here is one definition. It's not the one we're going to use to compute. So u cross v is equal to magnitude of u, magnitude of v, multiplied times sine theta, which is the angle between the two vectors. What would be wrong if I left the equation like this? So our cross product was your thumb, but that's a vector, not a number. What's on the right side, vector or number? Number. It's a number. It's magnitude times magnitude times the output of sine, which is another number. So this would not make sense right here. So yeah, what we would do is put an n, which would be the unit vector, where n is the unit vector in the thumb direction. So that is one definition right there. If we divide by those magnitudes, uh, we'll leave that one right there. Uh, oh, we'll be divided by n. So. I want to solve for sine theta. All right, so first thing I can do is divide by the u and the v, the magnitude u, magnitude v. Those are numbers, scalars, so they can divide out to the other side. That's not a problem. Now, what is what would be wrong if I divided by n? n is a vector. n is a vector. You can't divide by a vector. Even if I could divide by a vector, then I would have a vector on the left side equals a number on the right side. So several problems with getting rid of n. What we're going to do instead is take the magnitude of both sides. So those two are equal, so we're just going to take the magnitude. Can you multiply on the right by the inverse also? Or well, there's no inverse multiplicative vector. You also can't multiply vectors, this is a real issue. So every product you see on the board is a scalar times a vector. So there's like, that's the main issue is you, there is no multiplication with vectors. What we're looking at is a, it's a little bit weird, but on the left side, without the absolute value, the numerator is a vector divided by a scalar. So both, so this is a, product of a vector and a scalar, and then the right side is again the product of a scalar and a vector. All right, so we're gonna take the magnitudes here of both sides. Using the rule where we're allowed to remove scalars from magnitudes, the left side I can just take out the magnitude u, magnitude of v right out of the uh, magnitude. The right side, I have to absolute value the sine theta 
and then times magnitude of n. What is the magnitude of n? One. It's a unit vector, so magnitude of n is going to just cancel itself out. So I'm going to just write a big one in its place. Doesn't cancel to zero, it cancels out to one. So sine theta is going to equal magnitude of u cross v divided by magnitude of u magnitude of v. Oh, and that is absolute value of sine theta. So let's think about the way the sine function works, the values it takes. I'm not going to draw a unit circle. I'm going to draw two vectors with an angle in between because that's our situation. Can this, so we already saw the angle can't go past pi or 180 degrees because then you would measure on the short side. So the angle never is going to break pi. Can the angle ever be negative? If we try to make the angle negative, well, just take it's the positive angle between two vectors. So does, there's no real orientation on the angle because the vectors can be any position in space. So there's really no orientation on the angle. So it's always a positive measure. So theta is always going to be between 0 and pi. I'm going to graph the sine function from 0 to pi. It looks like this. Right here, it's always positive already. <clears throat> so sine's already positive, so I don't need the absolute value on the sine function because it's not going to be negative just from the way we're measuring the angle. So I'm going to go ahead and get the, the absolute values out. Here is our sine as it relates to the cross product. <clears throat> So now we're going to look at parallel vectors. What is the angle between parallel vectors? Zero. So the angle, they're going the same direction. So between them, if I want to draw them properly on top of each other, it's like that. But I. It's kind of hard to see, but I have two vectors just right on top of each other, so the angle will be zero. <clears throat> and of course, sine of zero is zero. So what that means is, using that formula we got at the top of the board, equals sine of zero, which is zero. We multiply by the magnitude u and magnitude v. Magnitude of zero means something very specific about your vector. So if you have a vector of magnitude zero, what type of vector do you, do you have? Zero vector. A zero vector. If there's any other magnitude, even magnitude one, something easy. If it's magnitude one, I don't know where that vector is pointing. Magnitude zero is special because it's the vector that's pointing nowhere. So that means I know the vector is zero. So I can write down u cross v is equal to the zero vector. When, exactly when, u is parallel to v. Question? Is there any uh, like signage that shows the inverse of magnitude or taking off the magnitude of something? 1 over magnitude v would be the inverse magnitude. That would well, be the multiplicative inverse. Most of the time, that's the inverse you'd be, you would need. The additive inverse would be negative magnitude. But usually, you only use magnitude to scale a vector, so you're using it multiplicatively normally. All right, so parallel vectors have the property that the cross product is 0. Let's look at anti-parallel vectors.
So anti-parallel vectors point opposite directions. So this has the biggest angle two vectors can have, which is pi. And again, sine pi is also 0. So doing all the same work, well, we'll skip all the same work, but that means the cross product magnitude is 0. So the cross product is the 0 vector. You could spell it. Uh, this usually means empty set right there, not the zero vector if you put a slash through your zero. So that that's not a valid symbol. I haven't really seen another another way to write aside from that. I think if you're on a computer, you just do bold zero. That'll be good. Capital O maybe, but I would do bold zero. All right, so that's anti-parallel vectors. Now we're going to look back at the right hand rule. I don't want to draw that beautiful hand again, so I'm going to scroll back to that hand picture. So make your first two fingers parallel. When your fingers are parallel, you can rotate your wrist all the way around, and your two fingers are still pointing the exact same direction. So just rotate the wrist, and you can do a little elbow or shoulder rotation, but as you can see, your thumb is still perpendicular to both vectors, no matter where your thumb's pointing. And the consequence of that is there's not one vector that's perpendicular. There's an infinite number of vectors in that sort of radial way of your thumb moving, which is why there's, that's one of the reasons a cross product is zero, because there is not one vector that's perpendicular. Mathematically, we'll see why it works out later, but that's, that's how the right hand rule relates to these zero vectors we just got here. So you could detect parallel vectors if the cross product is zero, but again, that's a super tedious and slow way to check it. You should check if vectors are parallel if they're multiples of each other. You get that much faster. All right, so we're gonna look at algebraic properties. So we'll use vectors u, v, and w, and alpha and beta will be our scalars. Well, if I write r and s, I mean alpha and beta. So one thing you can do with scalars, you can factor them out. So in red, I'm going to write something very wrong that you shouldn't do. What property would we call it if alpha worked the way I wrote it on the board? Distributive, distributive property. It would be the distributive property where you'd be distributing across addition, not across any type of product. So it doesn't work like this right here. If I do want to make this true, what do I have to do to the left side so it's true using the property I wrote down already? Alpha It'll be alpha squared because each of them have an alpha, so you're going to bring both of the alphas to the front. Just think products work like products. So if I took out the, if I just went back to everything being a number, if I did uh, A, B times A, C, I would factor the A out from each and it would be an A squared. It would work just like it does above. So products work just like products do. That's why we call them products. So we got our anti-commutativity property we saw before. So 
So if you have the zero vector cross u, now it's hard to do with fingers, but you have to imagine you don't have one of your two fingers. So let's pretend that the, the middle finger is not in this. So just put your middle finger away, just your pointer finger, you have that same problem of there's an infinite number of vectors that would be perpendicular right there. So if you have a zero vector cross any vector, you get the zero vector again. We do call the cross product a product for this reason here. When you do u cross product with v plus w, you get to distribute your multiplication across addition. And you also get distribution the other way. So it may look silly, but why do I need to have both versions? What's different? I'm distributing a product across a sum. But what is the significant difference? There could be a negative sign if I did what? If I commuted, if I turned it around, there'd be a negative sign. So because we don't have commutativity, the order I multiply is different. So right here, the order is different that we're multiplying in, so I have to write down both distributive properties. Multiplying to the right, so multiplying to the right and multiplying to the left. So we're going to look at the area now. Area of a parallel parallelogram with sides. U and V is area equals magnitude U cross V. So if you have two vectors u and v, you can form a parallelogram from any two vectors. We'll do that now. So I'm going to make a copy of the vector u and a copy of the vector v, starting at the ends of the opposite vectors. And then that's how you get your parallelogram. And we want the area of that parallelogram right there. Yeah, so let's look at what happens if u and v are parallel. So we'll draw a parallelogram where u and v are parallel. If I want more details, I can definitely give you more details. There's u, there's v. So I'll do the same type of diagram. Here's a copy of V that starts at the end of U. Here's a copy of U that starts at the end of V. Kind of hard to see, but it looks like that. Nice parallelogram. So you flatten it out. Obviously, cross product is zero. Magnitude of the zero cross product is zero. The reason is your parallelogram is squashed all the way. It's got no area. So that's area of a parallelogram with sides. Now we're going to look at area of a triangle with sides. So we're going to start with the same vectors u and v. How do I make a triangle from two vectors? So we just got to close, we got to close our figure. So we're going to create the vector between the two. Uh, I believe it's u minus v or v minus u, depending on what direction you want to go. And the area is going to relate to the parallelogram area. So what I'll do is if I complete it to a parallelogram, 
we actually have twice the triangle area in here. It's a little bit tricky to see. I think you have to, if you rotate about the point right in the middle, you can turn one triangle into the other triangle. So that is our area here. So we're going to use the determinant formula for computations. So nowhere did I actually mention so far that the cross product is a three dimensional property only doesn't happen in two dimensions, doesn't happen in four dimensions, or any other number of dimensions, only three dimensions. <clears throat> the determinant formula uses that. So u is in three dimensions. So will have three coordinates, u1, u2, u3. v has three coordinates, v1, v2, v3. We take a cross product, that's the same as the magnitude of the vector of the matrix with i, j, k in row one, and then u1, u2, u3 in row two, v1, v2, v3 in row three. So I'm going to do row expansion across row one. When we're going to do determinants, we need a sign matrix. We're always using a three by three. So our sign matrix is always plus minus plus. And then the other ones don't matter because we're expanding across row one. So hopefully this will be familiar as I go through the determinant. So we get I times the determinant of the matrix where you remove column with the i and row with the i. Don't scribble on your paper. I'm going to erase that in two seconds. So just cover it with your finger and a pencil or two pencils or two fingers, however you want to cover it up. You don't want your eyes to read the wrong value. Well, what I do recommend is you do circle your first row. Circle your ijk row because you won't, you'll be always be expanding across that row. So the matrix we have left, the submatrix U2, U3, V2, V3, minus J times, so I'm gonna delete what we just put there. So now we're gonna cross out row two, and I have U1, U3. V1, V3. And last up, the K column. It's plus K. Again, I went plus minus plus because I'm using row one of the sign matrix. The sign matrix goes plus minus plus. So here we have U1. So I'm crossing out the K column. U1, U2. V over V1, V2. And now we need the two by two determinant. So that'll be go down the diagonal, multiply, go up the diagonal, multiply, and then subtract those two products you get. So we have U2, V3 minus V2, U3. So make sure your U's don't look like your V's. However you want to make them look different is fine. I know a lot of people will make their U without, their U will be my V, but then their V will have a proper point at the bottom. That's totally fine if you want to use that notation. Just make sure all your U's look the same 
and they don't look like all your V's and all your V's look the same. So we're going to the second two by two determinant. It's going to be U1 V3 minus V1 U3 plus K times U1 V2 minus U, uh, V1 U2. So this is IJK notation. You can write it in diamond bracket notation. So let's go ahead and compute using this formula. Compute U cross V when vector U equals two, uh, one, one and v is negative four three one so we'll set up the matrix u cross v equals matrix determinant ijk in the numerator or in the upper row Two one one in the second row and negative four three one in the third row. And we have I times. Now I strongly recommend you circle your first row always because you're always going to expand on row one and then use a finger or something else to block out the column you're on. So I'm going to block out column one. So we have determinant of one one three one now it's minus j times the determinant crossing out the j column so it's two one negative four one plus k times so block out the k column two one minus four three. So I'm going to switch to a diamond notation now and then do these products. One times one is one minus three, comma negative two plus four. Be very careful on our J term. Two times one is two. We have minus negative four. So that's plus four. Don't get messed up when you're going negative on your upper, when you're going up on the diagonal. And last up, we have two times three is six. And again, here we have minus four times one is negative four, six minus negative four, six plus four. So we have negative two, negative six, 10. How would I check if this is actually perpendicular to you? How would I use the dot product here? The, the dot product is zero. So that's how I would check. Once I computed the vector, I would dot it with u, it should get zero, and dot it with v, I should also get zero.